Welcome back. Firoz Shah Godrej, the young Godrej Sion spearheading the realty business of the Godrej Group, that's Godrej Properties, is a man on a mission. He is out to realize his father Adi Godrej's target of multiplying the real estate turnover to 20,000 crores by 2020. With a presence across 12 cities in India, it's the national capital region market that tops his priority list. And while he does see some short-term pain, over the long term, Piroj Shah Godrej is bullish on the potential of India's real estate market. Hear out Vasudha Sharma in conversation with the Godrej Properties MD and CEO. Godrej Properties currently is on entirely on residential projects and we're now a national developer. We're present in about 12 cities, which includes all the important real estate markets like Mumbai, NCR, Bangalore, but also some smaller markets like Ahmedabad and Chandigarh. Um, we continue to want to uh, play on a national level and have seen great success with that strategy so far. And our, our main target will be sort of the mid-income residential space. That's where we think the bulk of the demand today is. That's where we've seen a lot of traction. Of course, we'll continue to have um, some projects that don't fit within that category. For example, we have in Mumbai some very high-end uh, projects at the you know, ultra-premium level. We also have some commercial projects currently in the portfolio, including one exciting project in BKC um, in Mumbai, which is now the commercial heart of Mumbai. So we have you know, a variety of projects, but I think going forward, our primary focus will be residential projects in, in top markets. Tell us about your expansion plans. Which locations are you looking at? Yes. NCR is certainly one of our huge priorities, as, as you rightly said. We, we did our first project here, started in 2010, called Godridge Frontier in Gurgaon. Today, of course, we're very happy to be launching our second project, Godridge Summit, which is also in Gurgaon. Um, I think, as, as you know, the, the NCR market now has already established itself as the largest single market in India. It's larger than the Mumbai market, larger than the Bangalore market, and I think is a very large growth opportunity for us. We've seen a very good acceptance of the brand in this market, even though we entered um, as a new player in the market in 2010. Our project did very well and sold out quite quickly. Um, we expect a similarly strong response for this project. So I think um, you know, the company uh, believes firmly that this is a market that could be one of our most important, if not the most important market uh, going forward. The real estate sector is witnessing some challenging times when it comes to land, cost of funding or labor shortages. So what will be the strategy of Godrej Properties to navigate through some of these challenges? Yeah, I think, you know, it, it is a, a real estate is a sector that will go through challenging periods. I think if you look at the history of the sector, whether here in India or globally, it is a sector that has a lot of highs, has a lot of lows, and I think there's a clear reason why it's so cyclical. And that is that, you know, when things are good, people tend to overcommit, overinvest as, as, as developers. That creates an oversupply situation. In turn, when things are weak as they currently are, you know, people underinvest, which in turn recreates that cycle. So I think uh, clearly the sector, when interest rates are high when GDP growth levels aren't where they need to be. Um, being as sentiment driven a sector as this is, it will suffer. But I think what's important for individual developers is to ensure that they have the financial uh, strength to withstand any slowdown, temporary slowdown in the sector, and also are able to capture the opportunities that such slowdowns present. So I think what's important for us at Godrich Properties is that we are uh, viewing this slowdown as both uh, somewhat of a challenge to make sure that operationally we continue to perform and continue to show growth, and I think we've been successful in doing that, but equally as an opportunity to add new projects at attractive valuation. And I think that's been one of the areas where we've been extremely successful over the past couple of years. The finance minister recently called for a cut in property prices. Uh, developers on their part argue that uh, this cannot happen unless cost of funding comes down. What's your view on this? You know, I think each developer has to take an individual call. Each market has to be uh, has to be making individual decisions. I think clearly pricing is not at a level where it is very easy for developers to bring it down, given all the other constraints. I think if the government is serious about bringing real estate prices down, the only way that can be achieved is by easing supply constraints, allowing developers to come to market with uh, with their projects in a quicker, more efficient manner. That is today adding a huge amount of cost in terms of waiting time and interest cost but also a huge amount of risk and uncertainty for developers. So I think that is the most important way that uh, prices can be reined in. Um, developers are also suffering from a huge uh, cost escalation over the past 24 months. You know, in many markets, construction costs are up as much as 40, 50 percent over that two-year period. So certainly, I think developers are interested in, in selling their product. It's not that you know uh, there, there is an interest in just holding on indefinitely. Um, and while there may be a case in some individual projects.
markets or individual micro markets for prices to be brought down. I don't think it would be correct to say that there is a great case to be made for real estate prices coming down on a national level. The uncertainty on the policy front and that much of the reforms are stuck in politics, is that a concern for you? Certainly, I think you know it, it's a concern for me as a, as a developer, but I think more importantly, it's a concern for me as a citizen. I think uh, you know we need at this stage of India's growth to be doing everything possible uh, to be providing that engine and fueling that engine for further growth, and I don't see that happening um, quite as much as it as it needs to. I think it's not you know entirely the government's fault, of course. There are constraints, there are issues that they are facing with, but I think. Um, in general, our political parties, our, 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 our governance system needs to evolve to a, in, in a direction where it can move quicker, where it can build consensus quicker, and where it's not uh, you know, constantly being held up like, as it's currently been. Prices in Mumbai are at an all-time high. Uh, what would be your pricing outlook for that market? I think you know it's, it's an interesting uh, situation currently in Mumbai. I think you're right that pricing has held up quite well in Mumbai. Um, volumes in Mumbai, unlike in NCR, are down a little bit. Actually, we've seen you know pretty robust uh, attraction for our projects. But certainly, if you look at the data for the market as a whole, uh, there does seem to be a slowdown in volumes. I think it's very hard uh, for me to try to predict in the short term where prices are going. There are a lot of different factors at play. Um, over the medium term, however, I don't think it's very likely that there is room for a substantial correction. Again, because fundamentally the supply constraints on real estate in Mumbai continue to be uh, quite difficult. And I think ultimately that's the big way that prices can be brought down. And the other factor, of course, is that developers have made investments already, have got now uh, to face with much higher construction costs, interest costs, and other costs. So it is quite difficult unless you know, it, 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 the economy worsens to an extent where there is no option other than to cut prices. It is quite difficult for me to foresee a very significant correction. But of course, you know, in the short term, I, I think real estate prices can always move in either direction. But my sense is that it's a fairly low probab probability outcome that prices correct substantially. I have a figure here. Your Q1 FI13 total booking value was of 525 crores. Can we assume the same run rate for the full year? You know, we don't give any specific guidance uh, regarding uh, our, our financial outlook, partially because, you know, there's so many regulations and approvals and things needed that until we have those, we don't like to specifically talk about exactly when uh, projects will be launched. But actually, if you look at, uh, you know, our historical performance, typically our performance has built up through the year. So typically we have a much stronger quarter four than quarter one, and there are several reasons for that. One, just that in a fast-growing company, quarter four should be better than quarter one just because of the growth that's happened during the year. But also real, real, a real estate-specific factor is that a, more of the launches in real estate tend to happen in Q3 around the festival period, and sometimes those projects are, are, are available for sale and also for revenue recognition in quarter four. So certainly we would expect things to, to get, get further better, I think, from, from quarter one onwards. According to experts, the commercial real estate segment is witnessing uh, sluggishness in demand and rentals. What is your opinion on that? I think I would agree with that. Um, I think as we see it, the commercial market in, in most cities, particularly in some of the tier two markets where we do have projects, um, has been quite weak and that I think is a concern area. Uh, you know, again, in, in, it is a little bit of a micro market uh, question. In certain areas, there is a bit of temporary oversupply. Um, but what's also important to understand is that, again, commercial real estate is a very uh, sentiment-driven factor. And when companies aren't very certain of their growth prospects, given some of the economic sluggishness we're seeing, it is an easy decision to hold off uh, investing in new capacity or in new uh, you know, real estate space for your locations. So we do expect that you know, as economic conditions pick up, commercial real estate will be a beneficiary. I think, again, as I was saying on the cyclicality of the sector, I think you know, not too many developers are looking at fresh investments in, in commercial real estate right now, which uh, sort of counterintuitively means that it's quite likely that in two or three years, once the economy is uh, picked up, once the fundamental demand is coming back, we'll see that the supply hasn't been created adequately over the past two or three years. So I think uh, I, I do expect to see a recovery uh, in commercial real estate, but there's no question that it's going through a weak period now. And there's also, you know, for Godrej Properties, a decision that we want to focus more and more on, on the residential space. Tell us about the demand of some of your other projects like Horizon, Serenity. 
Yeah, you know, I think we've seen uh, good uh, demand for, for most of our products. Pyramid is an operational excellence initiative we have, so it's not a, it's not a particular project. The other ones we, ha we have seen uh, good demand for. I think most of our residential projects we have seen fairly robust uh, demand. I think we expect this Gurgaon project, Odrid Samit, uh, Dwarka Expressway, to actually be the one that from a volume perspective uh, we see the greatest demand for. But certainly I think um, other than some of our commercial projects where demand has been uh, uh, below expectations, on all our residential projects we continue to see uh, reasonably good demand. But I think uh, you know, the NCR is certainly the market that seems to be performing the strongest in the short term. So apart from NCR, any other cities that you're looking to enter? We're not looking to enter any new ones. We're already in 12 uh, cities. So I think we're, we feel we're in all the important real estate markets already. And lastly, what is your growth outlook for the real estate sector in India? No, I think the short-term outlook for the sector is a little bit uh, uh, sluggish. Um, clearly, when macro factors are as negative as they are, be it from interest rates to GDP growth, I think there is, it is a sector that does get affected. I don't expect anything uh, very negative, but certainly I don't expect the next uh, few months to be see very robust growth for the sector. For us, given the number of new projects we added, we do expect to see quite strong um, growth. But I think, you know, in the short term, as I said, it's very difficult to frankly predict either pricing or volumes and how exactly they'll react. But I think what, what, what is important to keep in mind is the medium to long term prospects of the sector. And there we are incredibly bullish. I think, you know, whether you look at um, the kind of urbanization that's happening in India, whether, the kind, whether you look at the kind of GDP growth that's expected over the ne next 10, 20 years. While there will be temporary periods of weakness, I think all of these uh, factors uh, point to a very, very strong and sustained growth in the sector over the long term. And I think that's what makes us um, extremely optimistic. Young blood at the helm of Godrej Properties with big mission and a big vision. Thank you very much for joining me today on the Realty Debate on the Property Show.